Number 13. Open the Build an Atom simulation, and then there's the link right here, and click on the Atom icon. Okay, so there's a link in the description if you don't have the simulation open right now, so you could just copy and paste it, and then you'll get the screen that's on the right-hand side here. Now, all you gotta do is just click the play button, so I'm gonna do that right now, and voila, okay. So here you go. So it brings you to this and they say, click on the atom icon. That's the first one here. So I'm just going to click that. And now we're in. So I'm going to write down here. They say A, B, C, D, and E. So let's see, maybe I need to write some stuff. So let's just see A, B, C, uh, D, and E. Okay. So for A, it says, pick any one of the first 10 elements that you would like to build and state its symbol. Okay, so basically what they mean is look at a periodic table, right? Go on the periodic table and select any element that you want from number one to 10. So this encompasses basically hydrogen all the way up until now here, if you wanna know what 10 is, it's the atomic number 10. So that would be, who is that? I think carbon is six. Seven, eight, nine. So that would be neon. Okay, so we can pick any element from hydrogen to neon. So I don't know, let's pick carbon, I guess, right? Carbon's pretty, very important. Or let's pick oxygen, it, it doesn't matter. But let's pick carbon. Okay, so for answer, I'm gonna pick carbon. So that's what you had to do. So pick its symbol. So whether you picked carbon, your answer for A would be C. If you picked oxygen, your answer would be O, etc. So A is done. Now it says drag protons, neutrons, and electrons onto the atom template to make an atom of your element. State the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in your atom, as well as the net charge and the mass number. Okay, so let's see how we got this. So I'm going to select C, I guess. Hmm. Oh, I guess I have to drag them. Okay, so I'm going to create carbon. And now we just have to drag them to make the atom. Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna start dragging protons, right? And if you've noticed, I dragged one proton in and it says hydrogen. Well, I don't want that, I want carbon, right? And I'm gonna keep dragging protons until I get carbon. So here we go, I'm gonna, okay, I'm at helium now. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Lithium was three. Beryllium was four, boron is five, last but not least, carbon is six. Okay, um, so here, it just says draw some protons, draw some neutrons, and, and drag some protons, drag neutrons, and drag electrons. So for right now, we have protons of being six. Now I'm just going to, you know, I'm gonna bring some neutrons in, you know, make it nice. I'm gonna equal them, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I have six protons, and now I have six neutrons, and let's drag some electrons, I don't know, but let's just keep it all, all nice, right? Six, six, and six, no pun to uh, everyone's favorite number. <laughs> so here I got five and six, okay. So, that's what I got. Electrons are six. Okay. Now they say here, state the number of protons, which we did. We put in six. State the number of neutrons. We put in six. And state the number of electrons. We put in six, as well as the net charge and mass number. All right. So remember, from questions 12 and 11, we should know how to find the net charge, right? The net charge or the overall charge, I'm gonna put it over here. Net charge or overall charge, they mean exactly the same thing, is always the number of protons minus the number of electrons that you have. So here I have six protons and I have six electrons, so six minus six is zero. So my net charge is zero. And you can see that in the diagram. You see up above, it said neutral atom. So that means zero, it's neutral, no charge. And the mass number, 
let's see if I click this. Ah, it does show you. Okay, so it tells you 12 for here. Oh, and if I click the net charge, there it is. It's zero as well because the same number of protons that you have equals to the same number of electrons, and that's why we have zero. So mass number, I'm just going to put MASS number is 12. Now just know that the mass number is always equal to protons plus neutrons. So since we had six protons and six neutrons, six plus six is 12. So that's where they're getting that from. Okay, so that's everything for B. We are done with B. Oh, and then it says C, click on the net charge and mass number to check your answers. So literally, we just did this, right? So we clicked on the net charge, it showed us that the real answer was zero, and we clicked on the mass number, which was 12, so this one was good. So state your answer, whether you were correct or incorrect, we were correct. Awesome. Next, predict whether your atom will be stable or unstable. Now, we have to predict, right? So this one could be right or it could be wrong, right? Maybe you would say, I don't know, it's sta stable. Or maybe you would say, I don't know, it's unstable. Either way, you know, you're just predicting. So I'm just going to get rid of this. Okay. So I'm going to say that this is stable. Why? Because, because it says state your reasoning, right? So I'm going to say it's stable because it's a neutral atom. So I see that I don't have a charge here. And if you have something that's neutral, it is stable. It will be stable. So no charges, no ions will be stable, will be a stable atom. So I see that I made a neutral atom. It's stable. And also I see on a periodic table, if you guys take out your periodic tables, the number that they give on the periodic table will be 12.01 close. So this means that the average carbon weighs or has a mass number of 12.01. Since this is really close to my mass, to our mass that we got, I'm going to also say that it's stable, right? So stable because close to average, I'm just going to put ABG, average atomic, well, we'll say mass number. So since we got a 12, and if we look on the periodic table and the average mass is 12.01, I can assume that it's stable as well. So that's my answer for D. Now you could have different reasonings. Any reasoning, just as long as you state it, is fine for D. But now we just got to check the stable, unstable box. Was the answer correct? So let's see. Now I'm going to go over here and click this box over here on the thing where it says stable slash unstable. And yeah, it says it's stable. So it says, was your answer to D correct? It was correct. And if they say, if not, first predict what you can do to make a stable atom of your element. And then do it and see if it works. Explain your reasoning. So basically, you could probably just keep adding neutrons and electrons until you make something stable. All right. So if, can I take away, you see how if I just took away one neutron, it's very unstable. So that's what they're looking for. We could add more neutrons or let's see if I take this away. Okay, one electron away is still good. Two electrons, three, four, five. Ooh, so the electrons have nothing to do with it as far as what they're saying. It's the neutrons that make it stable or unstable. All right, see, there you go. So... I hope this helped, guys. This is a fun little cool experiment, so you guys can play along with it and choose different elements, right? Choose maybe try 1 through 10, you know, not including carbon, to just get the feel of it. All right, but this one was fun. I like this. If this helped at all, click the like button and let us know in the comments. All right, but I'll see you guys all for number 14. See you then.